Every once in a while, there are moments of clarity in American politics. Sometimes these moments of clarity are set off by a sequence of events. Sometimes they're set off by one giant event. But they are moments of clarity nonetheless. And one of the biggest moments of clarity that we are currently going through right now in America is the moment where we all realize, or at least large portions of the left realize this, because large portions of the right already knew this, that the media was lying about Trump supporters this entire time. For five years, ever since Donald Trump came down that escalator and announced that he was running for president, the media has gone on a full force attack against not only Donald Trump, but his entire base of supporters. Now, some of them said, well, it's not his whole support base. It's just the overwhelming majority of them that are racist, sexist, authoritarian, fascist, homophobe, white supremacist, and on the verge of committing political violence in his name and a threat to our republic. Now, to further this narrative, media outlets, online, mainstream, decided that they were going to go out into the world, across this country, and find any story that they could twist of a Trump supporter doing something bad so that they could say it was indicative of the entire support base and thus fascism or racism or whatever was rising in this country. And when supply did not meet the demand for hateful Trump supporters, the media just ran with made-up stories or made-up stories of their own. A perfect example of this that we all remember is the Jussie Smollett story. This story that on its face was absolutely ridiculous, that Trump supporters that watched Empire and didn't like Jussie Smollett specifically because he was tweeting mean things to President Trump and also hated him because he was black and gay, would stand around on a street corner in the gay district of Chicago during a polar vortex where the bleach that they intended to throw on him was going to freeze due to the low temperatures in case he would get a Subway sandwich so that they could target him for a hate crime. Now that sounds absolutely ridiculous, and the story sounded ridiculous at the time. There was a 0% chance that that happened, and that happened for the reasons that Jussie Smollett was arguing, but the media ran with that. They said it was indicative of the Trump base. They said Mike Pence is responsible. You guys remember Ellen Page saying that specifically on a late night show, and this was just more proof of what we've been warning about, about the rise of hateful Trump supporters attacking people for being minorities and gay and being on a TV show in a polar vortex. But that wasn't the only case. Remember, Jussie Smollett made up that story. The media just didn't fact check it and ran with it. Look at the Nick Sandman story, which happened within the same 30-day span as the Jussie Smollett hate crime that didn't happen. The media went crazy, all based on the smirk on this guy's face, the apparent smirk on this child's face. They made up this whole narrative about how this was white supremacy attacking Native Americans, how the MAGA hat symbol was just a symbol of their racism and they targeted this guy. Even though it's incredibly unlikely and incredibly ridiculous that a bunch of Catholic high school students that are there for the March for Life would seek out a Native American with a drum and attack him by having him bang a drum inches away from their face. I mean, if you watch that original Sandman video, it was kind of insane how close Nathan Phillips was to this child's face. But the media ran with this, even though the video didn't even show a hint of impropriety on behalf of the 16-year-old child, and arguably showed condemnation-worthy behavior on behalf of this Native American activist, who turns out to be a scammer who repeatedly scammed with fate hate crime allegations against people he didn't like. Now, while it is true that these are giant, prominent cases that were thrust upon us by the mainstream media despite the fact that they had no backing, they are not isolated incidents. I've covered multiple videos on this channel of fake hate crimes or fake attacks from Trump supporters that turned out to be absolutely nothing, or worst case scenario, the left attacking Trump supporters because they perceive them to be hateful, which is a narrative fueled by the media. And then the 2020 election happened. Joe Biden versus President Trump on the ballot November 3rd, and on the evening of the election, it looked like President Trump had locked in a successful second term. However, we all know what happened after that. More votes started coming in, it started to turn key states for Joe Biden, and now it looks like Joe Biden is in the lead. But even worse, it looks like to a lot of Republicans, like Joe Biden or some machination of the Democratic Party, 
actually stole this election from President Trump. Now, I'm not saying that that happened, but that perception is definitely out there, and it is larger amongst Trump supporters. There's no way to deny that. Right now, it's being battled out in the courts. We will see the results of the court cases. I made an entire video about my thoughts on the chances of the court case. You check it out. But point being, a large portion of Trump supporters think that this election was stolen. But where are the riots? Where are they? Just prior to the election, we saw reports of people who own businesses in major metropolitan areas boarding up those businesses because they were afraid that the outcome of the election would lead to violence. And because Donald Trump was leading on election night, there was some violence, there was some rioting, there was some property destruction, there were fires being started. But all of a sudden, after Joe Biden took the lead, the rioting stopped, the violence stopped, the property destruction stopped, even though Trump supporters feel aggrieved. I mean, think about it for a second, really think about it. In the 2016 presidential election, Democrats and leftists knew that Donald Trump won legitimately according to our system. Now, I know a lot of them were like, Russia, 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 but ask any of those people to describe what Russia actually did, what collusion actually meant, and they couldn't tell you. And I know some of them were angry about Hillary winning the popular vote, but Trump winning the Electoral College. But they knew in their hearts that President Trump won the election legitimately according to the rules of our system. Even if they disagreed with the way that we pick our president, they knew that it was legitimate, again, according to the rules of our system. But they were getting violent immediately. They were destroying property immediately. Once it was clear that President Trump won, and by the way, they were violent against Trump supporters during the presidential campaign, all hell broke loose. Every single political event for President Trump was met with violence, rioting, and property destruction. Even the inauguration, if you remember that story where the left decided to own Trump by destroying this limousine that was obviously owned by a rich, white, angry man that was actually owned by a Middle Eastern man, but they were getting violent right away, even though they knew that the election results were legitimate. Despite the media's conspiracy theorizing about Russiagate and how the Russians did something by buying like $176,000 of Facebook ads, they knew that Trump was the legit president. Now Trump supporters think that Trump is still the legit winner of the 2020 election, and there's no destruction. There's no rioting. There's no property damage. You think the people who own businesses in New York and all these cities that boarded them up were boarding them up because they expected the right to riot? No, and a lot of them are actually taking down the boards because they know that as the election goes more and more towards Joe Biden, that Republicans and Trump supporters, despite what the media is telling them, are not the fascists, they're not the violent ones, they're not the rioters. There's a reason that you keep seeing this clip all over the media. We are not prepared to give that number the now. The Biden crime family stealing the election! The media's covering up! The Biden crime family stealing this election! The media's covering up! The Biden crime family stealing this election! The media's covering up! We want our freedom for the world! Give us our freedom, Joe Biden! Your Biden's covering up this election! He's stealing it! It's because this is all the left has. People who are angry and upset that their candidate lost, expressing that anger and sadness in a peaceful manner. This is why the left has to call people chanting count the vote outside of an Arizona county where they are in fact counting votes but taking a long time, extremist groups armed with weapons. Meanwhile, they're out there, they're not hurting anybody, they didn't destroy anything, and they have weapons because Arizona is an open carry state and these people likely carry their weapons all the time. Compare and contrast that to left-wing cities where people were destroying stuff on the chance that Trump might have won, and you know exactly who the violent side is. You know what we're going through in this country. It's called asymmetric radicalization. The left is getting more radical, more authoritarian, more violent, and the right is staying in the same place. They're not getting more radical. They're not attacking people in the street. Now, of course, there are isolated incidents of Trump supporters or right-wing people or small right-wing groups plotting or engaging in actual political violence, but largely, it's in no way comparable to the large groups of left-wing activists that are rioting consistently throughout this nation. Remember that fantastical survey that the left was promoting that said 93% of the Black Lives Matter events were peaceful? Well, when you looked into that study, you realized that that 7%
is over 600 riots that happened in the course of the Black Lives Matter riots in just the 90-day period that they were observing. And in that larger percentage of events that weren't peaceful included like Facebook events with 20 people in it. So it's actually much higher than 7%, but even if it was just 7%, 600 riots in the country in 900 days is completely and utterly unacceptable. If Republicans had one event, just one event, that led to large-scale rioting, and that rioting caused not billions of dollars, not hundreds of millions of dollars, but in the millions of dollars range of property damage, we would never hear the end of it. Remember, Kyle Rittenhouse is on video, clearly and unambiguously acting in self-defense not only morally, but according to the letter of the law in the state of Wisconsin. And they talk about him like he's this right-wing militia white supremacist that went out to kill people intentionally. Weird how he only killed people or shot people that were actively trying to reach for his gun, pull their own gun on him, or attack him in some way. Weird how that happened. But after that, we heard about how the rise of the right wing was coming. This was the beginning of the violence the media was promising. This guy clearly acting in self-defense. Then shortly after that, a member of Antifa, the organization Antifa, one of their members, was caught on video stalking a Trump supporter, coming up on him, pulling a gun out, and shooting him in the chest in cold blood, killing him. And what were the headlines after that? That maybe the right wing was going to retaliate for this. The right-wing violence in Portland led to this guy dying. I don't know how that happened, but maybe we're going to be expecting a lot more right-wing violence in retaliation for this thing that I don't want to talk about who the perpetrator of it was. Remember, Joe Biden condemned Trump for the violence of Trump supporters in Portland recently on the debate stage when one of his supporters, Trump supporters, was just walking down the street when he was stalked, targeted, and murdered in cold blood. Biden blamed him, and the questions in that debate weren't, Joe Biden, when are you going to stop actively denying the existence of Antifa? You are feeding into that organization's propaganda while doing so, and that has provided cover to people who think that they can go out and murder Trump supporters in cold blood. Instead of that, we got Trump, will you for the billionth time condemn white supremacy and tell groups that you don't control to stand down, which even if you do that, implies that you control them and thus is another cudgel that we can beat you with. Look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that there aren't good people who supported Joe Biden. I'm not going to tell you that there aren't good people that just can't stand President Trump for one reason or another. I know these people exist. They're my friends. They're my family in my personal life. They're all great people. They just happen to disagree with me on politics. But overall, on the average, Trump supporters are better people. Again, that's not to say that there aren't bad people on the Republican side or on the Trump side, but by any metric, most charitable, most hours volunteered, all of the indicators of personal good behavior, Trump supporters are better. And one of the most glaring and obvious ways you can see that is that Trump supporters don't riot. Republicans do not riot. The far left has been rioting nonstop this year because they haven't been able to get what they've wanted. They've been rioting in bursts across the country ever since President Trump started his campaign. Trump supporters have not responded in kind, even under circumstances where they truly believe that the election is being stolen from them as they speak, they will not destroy the property of their neighbors in order to get what they want politically. They will not justify that destruction like so many have in the mainstream media. They would condemn it immediately. Trump supporters, Republicans, on the margins, again, isolated incidents, there's a ton of bad people on all sides. Believe me, I hate people on all sides, but they're better people. And that's the moment of clarity. That's what you should take away from the events that you're watching right now. Nobody's boarding up their windows because the Trump supporters are coming. Because guess what? They're not coming. They're not going to smash a business's window just because Joe Biden might be sworn in on January 20th of next year. What we should be doing is shunning these people. Shunning, shaming these people is a statement of moral indignation that these people are not fit for polite society. It's not only that Trump has to lose, but that all his enablers have to lose. They have to, we have to collectively, in essence, burn down the Republican Party. Um, we have to level them because if there are survivors, if there are people who weather this storm, they will do it again. Oh, and one more thing. If you thought the hatred was about Trump and not about you, the supporters, 
Just look at the way that the left is reacting even when they believe that they've won. They're talking about making a list of their political enemies. They got Ocasio-Cortez calling for this to be put together, a sitting member of Congress. You have hosts on MSNBC or guests on MSNBC talking about how we have to force all Trump supporters out of polite society. They're calling for truth and reconciliation commissions, re-education of their political opponents because how dare they vote against the interests that they personally have because they cannot possibly understand that a Trump supporter might dare disagree with them because they deserve to rule you. But hey, those are just my thoughts. They happen to be 100% accurate, by the way, so they're actually facts. But let me know if you disagree, your wrong opinion, and your non-facts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can support me via the support links. Actually, I just enabled annual memberships on Patreon. If you're interested in that, go over there and check that out. You get a discount rate. This has been me talking about a moment of clarity in American politics that a lot of us didn't need, but a lot of people should be coming to in the recent days. Till next time.